good news. I don't mean to hog the good news today, but I got excited because I woke up this morning and um, one of my best friends, longest running friends in my life, I consider him a brother. We've been through a whole lot together, uh, starting from a young age, you know, uh, preteens. We've known each other since preteen, and, and since this man has gone on to become one of the most reputable producers that hip-hop has ever seen. He's worked with everyone, uh, from Master P to uh, to Dr. Dre to Too Short to Tech 9 I mean, the list goes to the Loonies, to Messy Marv, to Spice One. The list goes on and on again. <laughs> Award-winning producer, the people's champ, the one and only EA Ski is on the line with me right now, citizen. EA Ski! Yo! Yo, 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 what's up with it, y'all? How y'all feeling this morning? Come on. <laughs> Come on, Ski. What's poppin', baby? It's Good News what's Thursday, up? What's man. Up? Come on, man. What we doing? Hey. Yeah. Hey, man, hey, you know the good news. You know, Sway, you know what we got to do, man. We got to keep it always, you know, 100 with this music and the culture. Mm-hmm. And um, I just dropped a new uh, instrumental album, man. I said I would never do it, Sway. And um, I sat back, man. I had so much great material, man. And I knew a lot of people was home, and I wanted to just get them back inspired you know, to uh, go back and listen to music the way it, um, it used to sound, you know, so I put it on vinyl. So I got a vinyl instrumental album called Producers vs. Beatmakers. Come on, man. There he goes. I love yes, it. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, Yo, sir. You, and you put it, what made you decide to do it? Because you did say you would never do do a beat album, but what happened? You know, um, in the midst of working on so much material, I mean, like stuff for Dre, Q, just the list go on. Wait I had a, a lot of material. That that wait, hold up. Wait, wait, hold up, man. Now, you, you just can't. Come on, man. Come on, Steve. I just said you know me my whole life. You're going to stun on me, too. Oh, come on. <laughs> There's always room for more, yeah. yo. <laughs> come on. Yeah, you crazy. Cube, Cube, Dre. You hear that, Ace? We dropping that off. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First just Cube. basis. Yeah, Cube, Dre, you know. Okay, my basket. Go ahead. So you've been working with them? Now, yeah, you know, so I was working on a lot of material, you know, and, um, I was sitting back on a lot of it, and um, I was just saying, man, it, it, it just sounds incredible, man. And then I, I had the thought when I was listening to the MP3s, I was like, man, these are not sounding as pristine as I would like it to sound to me. So I just got an idea one day. I said, what if I put it on vinyl? And, man, I hit the jackpot, man. I mean, the, the, it, it sounds incredible, man. Um, Battle Cat hit me. He was like, bro, this wow. is crazy. I mean, it just it sounds amazing. It sounds amazing. I think that we've gotten away from, you know, how music sounds. And like I said, I, I love the technology, what's going on. But I think when you go back to the foundation and you really hear how music sounds, you hear the soul and harmonics in it. And I just think it's an experience. And I think for those who haven't come from the vinyl or the CD or the tape, you know, it's something to experience to really hear how music truly sounds. You know, it's mm-hmm. very pristine. Do you lose a generation of sound when you put music on an MP3? By far. By far. It's the worst sounding uh, format you can have because uh, it's very overcompressed. Uh, it just It's almost like it's pointless because you go in the studio and you mix and you put hours and hours into mixing and then it just goes to an MP3 and it just loses all the dynamics that you put into that mix. It's almost like counterproductive. You know what I mean? It makes, it makes no sense. But, you know, to the big corporations, for them... It's like, well, we don't want to pay to have them on waves because waves take up so much space because that's where the dynamics is in, is in the data. So once you start, you know, compressing it where you can put so much on the server, but it's smaller files, that means that everything now gets squished. It gets compressed. And so now you have you have a very that's, – that's why a lot of stuff they're trying to remaster for MP3s, but it never will sound as pristine as it should sound. Mm-hmm. This project you know, is called the project is called producers, producers versus beat makers versus beat makers. Yes, What's, sir. And I've asked you this before, and I've heard many mm-hmm. people answer. Just Blaze, uh, Timberland, uh, different <clears throat> producers that's on your level of the elite class of producers. What's the difference, bro? I mean, the difference is is like you know. Anybody really can be a beat maker. You know, I, you know, my daughter, 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, they they make beats. They go in there, they make beats, they hit the beat, they make, and it sounds good. But it's a difference between making a record. You know, when you're making a record, there's a lot of things that goes into it. You know, as far as the arrangements, the composing, you know, you have to go in there. Sometimes you might listen to something and say, you know what, this doesn't necessarily take, you know, saying a, a, a sample drum. You might want to have live drums because it gives it a feel. And being able to arrange it, it's like, you know, I'm going to take the synth bass out. I'm going to get a live bass guitar player. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm going to take this part, take this chorus. It's a lot that goes into producing. A producer is not necessarily a person that makes beats neither. Mm. You know? A producer is a person that can sit there and actually arrange that record without even playing a note and be able to say, no, we need to bring this horn session in because this is going to make this record come out. And it actually producing the record makes it become that type of record that has playback value. You know, and, um, and a lot of beat makers, they're into, I made this beat, rap on it, sing on it, do whatever you do. But it's all over the place. It, don't, it really doesn't have a structure. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, you know, when you're composing and arranging, you're arranging, you're breaking stuff out, you're saying this is going to elevate this part, this is going to elevate, where a lot of beat makers, they just, they hear their beats, and, they, and there's some great beat makers out there. But the art of producing is when you can take an artist and really, you know, a, a, a artist has a, a vocal um, a range. Yep. So, you know, you want to be able to take an artist's range and say, you know, the way his tone is, I'm going to fit this music to match this tone. Like a lot of artists, because they can rap so well, they think that every beat compliment them, and it doesn't. Mm. Even though they'll kill it verbally, but is it a good record is now the question. Mm. You know? So you'll hear a lot of artists that lyrically will murder you, murder you, but you like them basically for the bars, not so much for the record. Mm. And that's where the producer come in because the producer can really arrange and hear the tone and be able to put the sounds to really go around and compliment this artist and bring them into a produce a well produced record. And this is why you see the Dre's and the DJ Quakes and the Battle Cats and the Pharrells and and the Timberlands, you know, because they understand that I hear this artist on a whole different. I, I'm listening to their tone because their tone is a is a pitch. It's a it's a key. And That's we need to understand how to get them in that groove to make that record have playback value. Right. Nice game, man. Mm. Listen, man. Premier is one of the producers, I think, that have mastered that, too. Yes, uh, sir. We, we, shout we, out to we, Premier, man. D- yeah. DJ Premier. Give him a round of applause. We've yeah, seen shout him out step, to Premier. And you can tell a person's prowess by being able to step into any genre and there then make is. something great. You know what I mean? Premier yes, has sir. done that over and yes, over. Yes, sir. We've heard you do, do that over and over. I remember when Nipsey Hussle put out his Crenshaw uh, mixtape and charged people $100, and the, and the place went crazy, man. The party the party, the party, party erupted. $100, the party erupted. <laughs> <laughs> the, DJ, the DJ pulled the record back. You know, I mean, people stopped dancing in the middle of the $100. You know, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and you know, the moment I saw him and I reached him, I was praying I had a hundred in my wallet. I didn't even know what I had in my oh, wallet. Man. man, I was praying I had a hundred because I, I understood it. That was the value he right. put on it. And that's what, right. the, therefore, that's the value it is. If you want his work, right. you're going to have to spend this amount of money, right? Right. Citizens, right. Right. you go to easki.com. I need every citizen to support my brother. easki.com. That's the letter E, the letter A, the letter S, K I.com. You can and download- make sure they put the dashes in there. The E dash A dash S K I.com. Okay. E dash A dash S K. You know, we went to Bret Hart Ski. The E hyphen A hyphen S K I. Okay. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yo, Bizzle, we were some smart guys in school. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Come on, no. Ski. Ski, we had gate classes. Come on, we were yeah, smart. Yes, sir. <laughs> Crazy, Sway. <laughs> Let me bro. jump in real quick, Sway, before Ski peases out and then grabs his breakfast. Uh, now I'm curious. I feel like you've also made a K Ski for a track versus a song. You know what I mean? Which I think mm-hmm. can go into this conversation of um, a producer versus a beat maker. What I'm curious mm-hmm. about is a lot of times a producer will brag about 
something they created that took like five minutes. You know what I mean? What's the fastest record that you were able to produce? What was the longest beat and the longest production for you and why? The longest production for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. I got a lot of those stories. You know, for, for me, you know, like, I just put it to you like this here. When you make a record and it does well, sometimes you can overthink stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> and so sometimes it could take, you know, me weeks. It could take me maybe a month. But it's not because it's not sounding good. It's because, you know, the way I'm, I'm listening to the music as far as, you know, the kicks and snares. Like, you know, you I don't want to be able to have something that sounds so similar to what's already out there. But at the same time, I wanted to have a famili familiarity to it, yep. but mm -hmm. still have my own identity. So that would be the challenge. You know, like we come from the era... And, you know, I swear I'll vouch for this, uh, not biting, you know, biting, biting or copying, you know, saying was kind of like, you know, that was like blasphemous, you know, in, in, in the culture. But now it's become the thing. So I have to find, I walk that fine line with music and sometimes be able to say I have to still be a little bit familiar because then they'll think it's too old. But then I still have to give the nostalgia. So it's it become that thing with me sometimes why production could get a little bit, you know, like I'm playing around with it to try to uh, to merge it, you know, to kind of to keep the you know to keep the, the foundation, but still take it to a whole nother level for me, right. mm -hmm. you to know. Create that balance, yeah. But, yeah. but then question. sometimes you can make a record, you know, and you get in the groove, and it, and and sometimes the most simplest record that you think you got to do more to it, that's it. Right. And it can happen. It can happen. But you still have to arrange it and produce it too, though. Even though you might made the beat. The time won't be so much in the beat. You might make the beat within 5, 10, or 15 minutes based upon what type of beat it is, but then it's the arranging that takes the most and the mixing. That's mm. that's the time. So people confuse the mixing, I mean the beat with the mixing and the mastering and the stuff that it takes to really bring and highlight that production. EA Ski Citizens, this is, this is a class right here. We're trying to get on the offer courses online. Yeah, he needs to link with Rich Nice. <laughs> Come on, him and Rich can teach a whole seminar. Um, go to E hyphen A hyphen Ski S K I. It's a limited edition. It's limited vinyl, right? It's a vinyl limited edition. Yep, it's a limited edition. So it's a uh, it's only two hundred pressed, and I did that just for the real fans. And um and it but it comes with a, a card, an authentic card in there. So it's, so you might be like one or two hundred, or you know. 10 or 200 so there's a card in there and um like i said again I, um it's, it's doing really well it's actually selling it's almost almost out there to you be go totally honest with you Come it's on, almost man. out i mean the first the first two days i mean i don't even want to give you the numbers sway but uh it, it was crazy i'll talk was, to you about that number that's some real oakland thing right there he didn't want to he don't yeah, want to yeah, get yeah, a number yeah. sellers he couldn't yeah, help you himself. don't want to get the numbers out but it was it was crazy <laughs> it was crazy <laughs> Uh, man, support my brother uh, and support him just in general. E hyphen A hyphen ski dot com. That's good news. Producers versus beat makers is a limited edition. We talk about this all the time. How much value is on our intellectual property? And you starting to see people. People have been selling ours for years now. Now we're selling our own. You're going to see the EA ski hey. NFT soon. <laughs> hey, and you know what? <laughs> And Sway, you know what? That's the, that was one of the biggest keys that I want to showcase that we use so many platforms, but we don't use our own platform. And this is where it has to go back to because in order for you to really, you know, retain your masters and own and and have control monetarily of what you do, you know, it has to go through your own infrastructure. And to watch these checks come through, and I'm seeing exactly. Where they coming from? They Germany, Australia, Japan, London. You know, saying you know all over the U.S. You know that's very empowering for your company because now you know exactly what you're getting from what you put into it. There you go, man. E A Ski, man. Give out your social. Folks want to follow you, brother. Man, it's uh, E A S K I underscore. There it is. Follow that, man. Get that limited vinyl. It's, it's already selling out. Come on, man. Love you, brother. We'll talk yeah. soon, okay? I love you too, bro. Y'all y'all have a great morning, man. You God too. bless. You too. God hey, bless you. Hey, hey, Ski, I'm about to play that um, Reflect music with John Connor featuring uh, EA yes, Ski sir. featuring John Connor. We coming back with Good News Thursday, citizens. 888-742-3345. Yes, eight, 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 What's your good news? Here you go, boy.